Hi, welcome to chapter 4 of tutor tutorial 7 for Heritage Offices on Saurus. In the previous chapters, we covered the introduction, the messaging system, the profile, and the setting up of the profile, and the basic features of the dashboard. And in chapter 2, we covered the cases um, and unassigned cases. And in chapter 3, we covered the permit applications and how they differ slightly from um, other cases on Saurus. In this chapter, we're going to look at case tracking and hopefully you have time to finish off case decisions and permits linked to the case. So what I've done is linked the applicant user, so demo user, to the Moiler demo case. So I'm going to click on it from my dashboard and I'm going to look at the various links that appear below the for any name of the case. So you'll notice these are in red, these hyperlinks, there's the comments, um, typically used by the public registered conservation bodies but uh, committee members are also using this and if you comment as a case officer your comments will appear in the uh, committee members comments block which is hidden from the public view um, at this stage we are using this for communication between committee members um, over discussions and um, we may make this public in future but we're not sure at this stage whether that's it's necessary um, because the two blocks for registered conservation bodies and public comments are already on the public domain. The case decisions um, are for heritage offices only and this is how you generate letters um, and records of decision, interim and final comments, responses to notifications of intent to develop and so on. Um, case tracking is your uh, correspondence checklist so you can track phone calls and faxes and um, emails through the case tracking and permits is how you generate a permit. The last link subscribe to. This is mainly used by members of the public who aren't the applicant or the consultant um, or the heritage officer on a case and it sends a little simple message to the simple messages log under my account. I'll show you that in a sec. Um, and every time if anything changes on a case it triggers a little um, message to the simple messages log. So these will be listed under this uh, page, under simple messages on my account. So it'll help members of the public to follow um, uh, various cases when they've changed. Um, so they could simply log on to their simple messages dashboard and uh, follow the cases which have been recently updated. Okay, so let's go and uh, track, uh, create a case tracking entry. So you click on case tracking and let's pretend uh, someone's on the phone and they it's perhaps the applicant inquiring about um, some whether they submitted all the documentation. So query related to completion of application. Right, the date would normally just be the date that it's happening. So as the person's on the phone telephonic, the various types, you have telephonic, email, fax, letter, meeting and note. And again this is not uh, meant to replace the formal correspondence generated by the case decisions link. So this is an internal tracking system, it's only for case officers so the members of the public do not have access to your case tracking. Um, but it helps you as a case officer to um, jot down things very quickly, copy and paste an email for instance into this block. Um, and so other case officers taking over your job um, when you leave can um, pick up from where you left off without having to have access to your old emails and so on. So anything related to a case, if it's been emailed to you, copy and paste it into this log and make sure that the date is the same as the email that you received. So let's say test applicant called Let's in save and add another. We'll allow you to add another tracking log entry um, without having to navigate away from the screen. Um, but normally we just hit save. Brilliant. Um, so we now have a tracking entry. Let's go back to our case. And under the, um, uh, the various 
menu options above the case name you have the tracker and this shows us the inquiries listed in um, the, the latest date is the one on top of the list um, or at the bottom of the list rather um, and you can sort by the, um, the dates uh, by clicking on the table headers and the query type or the subject and so on and so forth okay if you click on the uh, hyperlink query related to completion of application online if you had a long entry the um, teaser trim view of the um, inquiry would have been viewed on the previous page and this is how you view the whole um, original log entry right that's pretty simple so it's quite important to track your cases as, uh, and create those case tracking entries as you move through your cases during the day. The second thing which uh, you'll use is case decisions and all of the the correspondence listed under official decisions and comments is generated through this link. So let's click on case decisions and we are, are going to select the Heritage Authority. All right, I'm going to generate um, one for the Northern Cape because we just recently rolled out SARS to the Nwao Boswa Kapabokoni um, Pra and uh, let's say today's date and then you can choose a committee um, these are the acronyms for the committees at the various Pras um, DOP is the only one which is perhaps not self-evident um, DOP means Delegations of Powers and that's when you're generating a letter um, to an applicant, for instance, where the committee is not involved. It's in terms of your duties um, and that you are issuing the, the correspondence. Uh, all the rest would follow from a meeting, uh, whether virtual or physical, of one of these uh, committees listed below. So let's, let's use DOP. Um, I'm just going to generate a letter so choose letter let's explain what these various ones are um, response to NID notification of intent to developments 381 those are developments where uh, the um, 38 of our National Heritage Resources Act is, um, is applies and um, it's really just when a, an applicant has notified us of uh, their intent to build something or to build a dam or construction um, it's not a permit application, um, it's not modification or alteration of a specific heritage resource, um, but it might involve heritage resources which um, uh, are generally protected or, or, yeah, which are generally protected, but the nature of the development is handled under Section 38. Um, we have 14 days with which to respond to a notification intent to develop, and in the purpose of this section of our Act is to guide the applicant on whether we would want a heritage impact assessment compiled and what the nature uh, of that heritage impact assessment will be or should be. Um, the other ones are final decisions so if the heritage authority in question is the decision maker they will eventually make a final decision on the matter and then if the uh, case is appealed then the heritage authority um, handles the appeal um, and the appeals process. For 38.8 cases uh, where NHRA um, is only one of the bits of legislation triggered um, and her the heritage component is being dealt with at uh, with other legislation like the uh, National Environmental Management Act or the Mining Petroleum Resources Development Act um, then we are making comments and the interim comment is for uh, where the case has not been resolved from a heritage standpoint and further information is required or impact assessments um, it's only when we make a final comment that that is our equivalent of a final decision on the matter but it is treated as a final comment to the relevant authority such as the planning department or Department of environmental affairs on making the final decision. Letter is pretty self-evident so that's um, for all general matters um, then permit is, a, is really a letter confirming a decision to issue a permit and that is usually accompanied by a permit. A compulsory repair order when the owner of a property for instance is uh, illegally uh, uh, 
altered uh, building, then we may issue a compulsory repair order notice to the owner um, to rectify the, the matter. Declaration and protection notices, those are also involved in the declaration nomination process and can be used for uh, notifying the owner or injured affected parties about our intent to declare a uh, heritage site um, as either provincial or national um, or with, with, whether we were withdrawing a notice or um, whether we would like their um, uh, consent or objection to the declaration. So you can use those two categories for uh, those scenarios. And these are pre-printed on the template that is generated fr from the uh, from the case decision. All right. So let's let's just use letter in this case. Um, there are two act fields: uh, the National Heritage Resources Act and the KwaZulu Natal Heritage um, Act. These um, the KZN HA is only used by a MAFA, um, but the NHRA applies to to everyone else. And a MAFA sometimes uses the NHRA, especially in Section 38. Um, they use the NHRA for all of those decisions, and there's not much difference really. Uh, when but the um, sections of the KZN Act are slightly different to the NHRA when they're dealing with buildings um, older than 60 years and other sections. So that's the only difference. So if you had a MAFA, you would normally start with that, and if it's not being dealt with in the KZN Act, then you choose the NHRA and the. PDF generator will change accordingly depending on which ones you picked. Um, the next field, so let's, let's pick up, um, let's pretend this is a 38 um, 8 development, so we're just a commentary body, I think, on this one. Yes, so we're um, commenting perhaps to dead P on this one. Then terms and conditions do not apply. If I tick this, then the standard terms and conditions about notifying us about accidental discovery of burial grounds and graves or archaeological resources and so on will not print on the um, the letter. So I'm going to do that. It's just a letter. And then official docs, once I've saved my letter and published it, I can upload the PDF to the official docs. I prefer to upload the PDF before I actually publish the, the case decision um, and then make sure the format is correct and then once I've, I'm happy with everything and it's all in order then I finally publish. So we'll look at that in a sec. So under case discussion, this is the it was noted section in many of the pros. Um, during a meeting you note various items and then you decide on various things. Um, but you can use this for um, a general letter and it doesn't have to involve a decision as such. Um, we used to have a pre-printed decision stated on our um, on our letters and I've taken that away so now if you do make a decision you need to write out decision and then um, list the, the various points of your decision. Okay I think this tutorial is already 13 minutes long so let's cut it there and then we'll continue the next chapter.